So on similar grounds of the linear polynomial and the quadratic polynomial which we have discussed in comparison to the graphical understanding of their shapes. Similarly, the cubic polynomial with degree equal to 3 is also going to be a, of similar shape, of different shape in understanding in the graphical part. So what would be the shape of a cubic polynomial when we graph it on an, a real xy coordinate system is what we're going to see continued with the session. So a cubic polynomial, say for example, I take cubic polynomial in its graphical understanding. So let me take an example cubic polynomial, say p of x equal to x cubed minus 4x. Now that we have discussed about the zeros or the x-intercepts and y-intercepts, I directly draw the table of values before I start with this. Now, as I see this, I clearly understand that I can find my x-intercepts, but I can find my y-intercepts. I can find my x-intercepts first initially by letting y equal to 0, where y is equal to p of x equal to x cubed minus 4x. So when I take y equal to 0, I get x cubed minus 4x equal to 0, so that this gives me x times x squared minus 4 equal to 0. And this further gives me x plus 2 into x minus 2 equal to 0, because this can be raised as 2 square, where a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b. Therefore, I get 0, 2, and minus 2 as the roots of, or the zeros of the given cubic polynomial, x cubed minus 4x, with degree equal to 3. So as I clearly identify that I have got three x-intercepts, makes me understand that because the highest power is 3, which is the degree of the cubic polynomial, will at the most lead to only three x-intercepts. If I had the highest power as 7, then at the most I can have only seven zeros or roots of the given polynomial. So at the most, the roots of the given polynomial can be up to the degree of the polynomial, the value of the degree of the polynomial, but it cannot cross the degree value, as can be seen here with an example problem. Next, coming to the y-intercepts, I find y-intercepts by letting x equal to 0, therefore, in this case, my y will be 0 cubed minus 4 times of 0, which is 4. So this is my y-intercept and these are my x-intercepts is what I obtain separately for x and y-intercepts. Now once I got the x and y-intercepts, I take the table of values which I am going to consider here. This is x and y, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So I get this, let me randomly take few values on the right and left as 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 and then find the respective y values in case of this, the respective y values out here. So 0, 1, 2 and minus 1, minus 2. So when x is minus 2, I would like to find the value of y which I obtain by substituting in place of x as minus 2. So therefore, I get this as minus 2 whole cube minus 4 times of minus 2 minus 8 plus 4 to 8 which is 0. As I can also see that when x is minus 2 my y is directly 0. Similarly when my x is 2 also my y is 0 because this acts as the x intercept. Also when x is 0 my y is 0 as I can see in both the cases x is 0 y is 0 and when x is 0 y is 0. Therefore this gives me 0 and then when x is minus 1 let's see what the value is obtained as. Which is 3. And then when I substitute x equal to 1, 1 cube minus 4 times of 1 is minus 3. So that I get minus 3 when substituted for 1. 
So therefore, I get the corresponding points, negative 2, comma 0, this, 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 and this, as the points when paired. So let me draw these points on a real xy coordinate system and see what kind of a shape is obtained for this corresponding cubic polynomial. This is x-axis, this is y-axis, this is origin, and then I take 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And here I get negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 5, etc. And then 1, 2, etc. downwards is how I get the different values scaled on x and y axis. Now let me take the first point minus 2 comma 0 which I get here as negative 2 comma 0. So let me plot the first point which comes negative 2 comma 0 on x axis is the first point. Similarly minus 1 comma 3 lies minus 1 left on x raised on the upwards. Then 0, 0, is origin, which is already plotted out here. Then 1, minus 3 is a point which shifts 1 here and minus 3 out here. This is the point I obtain for 1, minus 3. And then 2, 0 is a point which is obtained here. So I got randomly all the five points plotted on the graph. Then I would like to join with a smooth free hand curve, a continuous smooth free using a hand. So then in that case, let's see how the shape would be. It comes here, comes down, touches, goes up and up. And this is how the cubic polynomial looks in its shape. The cubic polynomial y equals x cubed minus 4x is in the shape of a zigzag crest and a trough or something like this is how the cubic polynomial looks which we call in the sense and now clearly I identify that the graph cuts x axis at three points because I obtained three x intercepts so minus 2 0 and 2 are the x intercepts and since the graph cuts y-axis at 0, that means the y-intercept is 0, it passes through origin. The specialty of this is that this graph passes through origin. And hence is how I get the shape of a cubic polynomial. So like this, we can construct as many shapes as possible for different types of polynomials. If I have a quartic polynomial, also I would use the similar process of using the table, plotting the points, and then getting the shape by joining the points, I get the shape of a quadratic, of a quartic polynomial. Similarly, when I take a quintic polynomial, a polynomial with degree phi, I similarly take all the five points on the table, then I obtain the corresponding y values for the respective x values, then I plot on the xy real coordinate system, then joining the points using a smooth free hand curve, I get a quintic curve. So this is how any curve given in mathematics we use the approach of finding x and y intercepts and then the table of values and then I get the graph by plotting the points and joining them by freehand is how we understand the polynomials in graphical understanding. So coming to finding we also know that these coordinates can also be found as we know that this is minus 1 comma 3 and this is 1 comma minus 3 and these are obviously the x intercepts and then we get all the coordinates which are plotted here. So sometimes there are different types of cubic polynomials. Say for example, this is called the standard cubic polynomial or cubic polynomial y equal to x cube. Then what are the zeros of this cubic polynomial? 
the zeros are nothing but we get three repeated zeros as the zeros of this cubic polynomial. So which makes us in understand that the graph touches x-axis at zero. So this zero, this cubic polynomial, standard cubic polynomial y equal to x cubed with zeros as this will simply have the shape in this form where this touches cuts and then goes like this. If I take this as x and y axis, then this is the shape of y equal to x cube. It is something like this. It tries to touch at x axis and then crosses to the other side. That's how we get this standard cubic polynomial. So like that, we can construct using the various different cubic polynomials tested through the table of values, x-intercepts and y-intercepts.